Kelsey. I have my hat. I am drinking pomegranate oolong tea from Harney and Sons. And today I'm going to be filming a book haul of all of the books that I got in January. I haven't gotten any books in February yet, so these are all January books. And there are a lot of them, so I need to film this and get it up and get on with my life. There are three different categories of books here. First, there's this book outlet order that I bought a bunch of books on the book outlet Boxing Day sale after Christmas, and they came in January, so I'm counting these as January and not December. Um, and then I had my birthday in January, and I got a few books uh, for my birthday, and then I bought some used books, just a few of those. So I don't remember now exactly what the terms of the Boxing Day book outlet sale were, but I remember I was sitting there with my calculator trying to figure out how I could get like the most books that I wanted for like the least amount of money, and I think I did a really good job on that. So the first book that I got was one that I actually have already read, and that is Dragon Haven by Robin McKinley. I got this from the library and then I wanted to own it. This is, I guess, technically like a contemporary dragon fantasy, except I would sort of call it more of a contemporary alternate reality dragon science fiction, if that makes any sense. I don't think there's anything in here that's considered to be genuine magic, and it's very much like our world, but it's not. There are things that are different, like the existence of dragons. And this is about controversial dragon conservation uh, in a national park, and I enjoyed it very much. It's sort of masquerading as a traditional YA boy and dragon have adventures fantasy, but that, that isn't the tone of it, so I think if that's what you're wanting, you might be a little confused by this book. I think this book sort of takes that plot line and drops it into this sort of reality where, oh, we have to get funding from Congress to keep protecting the dragons, and there's all of this sort of real world stuff that's really, I found it amusing. I liked this book, I gave it four stars, and now I own a copy. The second book I have here was a total impulse buy, uh, and it was a scratch and dent copy, so it was really, really cheap. Um, and that is Mortal Fire by Elizabeth Knox. I remember reading one of her books in high school, and I don't remember much about it. I think it was actually the second book in the Dream Hunter duet, uh, Dreamquake, and I think I was confused in part because it was the second book and I didn't know it was the second book, um, but I remember being enthralled and perplexed by her writing, so I was curious to uh, try out her writing again and see what I think of it as an adult. This is a standalone novel, and it's young adult fantasy, and I believe it takes place in the same world as the Dream Hunter duet, but in a different decade. And it has a gorgeous cover with bees on it, and it was really cheap, so I got it. The next book here is a book I've actually been wanting to read for a long time, and that is Among Others by Jo Walton. I've read two of her books before. I've read The Just City, which is the first book in a trilogy. The second book, The Philosopher Kings, I'm gonna read soon, because the third book is coming out at some point this year, and I will want to be able to read it. I also own Life Load, which is her least popular book. It comes from a small publisher, and it's really hard to find, but I found this copy used, and this was actually the first Jo Walton book I read. I thought it was really fascinating uh, fantasy, really unusual. And among others is her most popular book, so I will own her most popular and her <laughs> least popular book. Um, and. I don't really want to try to explain a Joe Walton novel without reading it first, so I'm not going to try. But after I read this, I will totally tell you what I think it's about. This book here was the total, I wouldn't have bought it otherwise, impulse purchase that uh, pushed me over the price limit to get the discount, and that is The Crane Wife by Patrick Ness. Patrick Ness gets a lot of positive attention on booktube, um, but mostly for his young adult 
dystopian and darker fantasy stuff, which is not really my thing. And this is, as far as I can tell, an adult magical realism novel based on a Japanese folktale, which just seems like so much more my cup of tea. Aha, uh -huh, cup of tea. So eventually I will pick this up and see what I think of Patrick Ness writing something like this, and maybe if I love it I'll try some of his more popular books. The next book I have here is a collection of short stories. It's The Ivory and the Horn, a Newford collection by Charles DeLint. I've been wanting to read Charles DeLint's Newford books for a while now. He's supposedly a major figure in sort of the development of urban fantasy as a genre, and the Newford series are a series of books and short stories that uh, all take place in the same fictional city of Newford. And apparently it's the sort of series that doesn't need to be read in publication order. I'm hoping that's true because this is the third book in the series and the second short story collection. So I might try to find the first short story collection, Dreams Underfoot, and read it before I get to this, or I might not. We'll see. But I'm just going to read you the blurb on the back, which is why I think I'm going to like this. It says, In the city of Newford, when the stars are right, you can touch magic. Mermaids sing in the murky harbor, desert spirits crowd the night, and dreams are more real than waking. And that just sounds beautiful to me, so I got this. The next book I got, oh, 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 this is an entire trilogy. This is the Abhorsen Chronicles in one book, Sabriel, Lirael, and Abhorsen. I have read Sabriel. I read it back in like over the summer, early summer, spring, summer, something like that. Um, and I wanted to continue on with the trilogy. Funny story about this trilogy. I read like every popular young adult fantasy series that my uh, high school library had in high school except for this one because the cover art was was this cover art and I thought that she was so freakishly terrifying on this cover and I was scared to read it. So like I was clearly a high school book wimp. This cover is almost disappointingly simple, but this is all three books in one so I can continue on with the trilogy and it also has a, a short piece in the back, Nicholas Serre and The Creature in the Case, and so I'm very, very happy about this. The last book outlet book I got was Bitter Greens by Kate Forsyth. I've been wanting to read this for a while. It is uh, supposedly a historical fiction novel about the history of the Rapunzel fairy tale. I think this has some elements of retelling in it. I don't know to what extent. I think it takes place part in France, part in Italy. I'm very, very excited to read this and see what I think about it because I know that this author has a couple other fairy tale themed historical fiction novels, so if I like this, I will be able to read those as well. Next I have birthday books here. I got a couple of unusual things for my birthday that are, are bookish in nature. First with the usual though, I got Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, and I have been wanting to read this for quite a while. This is supposedly a beautifully written dystopian novel about theater. <laughs> so of course I want to read it. The next book I have here is a long story how I ended up getting this book, so I'm just putting it in with the birthday books. That's Six Guns Snow White by Catherine M. Valente. This is a new edition of an older novella. I believe this to be a dark adult retelling of Snow White. It takes place in the old American Wild West with a protagonist who is half Native American, and I am hoping for it to be brilliant. Next I got the tea book! So this is not a novel. This is not a novel at all. This is by Linda Gaylard. This is a book about experiencing the world's finest teas qualities, infusions, rituals, recipes, and it will tell me everything about the history and the practice of growing tea and the different types of teas and the different tea cultures that I will need to become a genuine tea snob. Um, I've been trying to learn about different types of tea and 
where they come from, and what to do with them. So I saw this book in Barnes & Noble, and I asked for it, and I received it. And so now when I have questions about tea, I have a book to look for the answers in. The last big book, birthday book that I got that is also not a novel is, is just really funny. This is a hoot. This is Extreme Birds, The World's Most Extraordinary and Bizarre Birds by Dominic Cousins. Dominic Cousins? This has these full spreads on all of the different, like, most extreme this or that or the other thing birds, like the worst flyer here. That little bird is sadly the worst flyer, and you can learn all about why it's the worst flyer. Sharpest hearing, ha ha ha. That's uh, the barn owl. <laughs> most voracious appetite is this cute little guy. <laughs> So that is <laughs> what Extreme Birds is. I don't know if I can physically fit this book anywhere in my apartment, so I might have to ship it back to my parents to keep, um, but this makes me smile. <laughs> the last books that I have are all used that I got for really, really cheap prices, so they were impulse buys. First is a hardcover copy of The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This was one of my favorite books of 2015, I got it from the library, and I had been looking out for a cheap used copy of the hardcover specifically because I like this um, cover art better than the paperback to uh, own and put on my shelf and lend out to other people because that's why, you know, you want to own copies of books you loved that you only recently read, you want to loan them out to other people. So I found this used at a thrift store for five dollars, and it was exactly what I had been looking for, and it is beautiful. These next three books were all one dollar purchases at one of my favorite used bookstores with an immense one dollar section. The first of these is a paperback of Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. Booktube loves Brandon Sanderson, and I have never read any of his books. I think in part it's because the way they're marketed, at least in the US, it just goes right over my head. I don't even notice his books because they look to me visually like something that's not aimed at my demographic at all, but then people on booktube have those, these like gorgeous UK covers and everyone loves them. I'm like, okay, this is a marketing thing, isn't it? This isn't like a, this book is not for me thing. So I'm willing to uh, try this out. I got this because it was one dollar and it's a standalone. So this seems like a no-brainer purchase for me. Second, I have a beautiful, beautiful hardcover copy of The Distant Hours by Kate Morton. This is one of my mom's favorite authors. She loaned me her copy of The Secret Keeper, which I have not yet read. But now once I read that, I will also be able to read this one. I actually gave her a copy of this for Christmas because I know she hasn't read it yet. So I can just get on the same page with my mom about the Kate Morton stuff. I think her books tend to have like a historical mystery element. I'm looking forward to reading them. My mom says great things. And the last book I got is another full trilogy, the first two books of which I've already read. And it is the Harper Hall of Pern trilogy by Anne McCaffrey, all in one book, and the three books are Dragon Song, Dragon Singer, and Dragon Drums. The Pern books are kind of older, classic-ish sci-fi uh, that reads quite a bit like fantasy because of the dragons. And several years ago, I started reading these books without realizing that it was the second trilogy in the series, so I was missing a bunch of the world building and I was pretty confused. So I recently read Dragonflight, which is the first Pern book. The first trilogy is The Dragon Riders of Pern. And I'm gonna finish these books so that I can read these um, and hopefully appreciate them better. I actually liked Dragon Song and Dragon Singer better than Dragonflight. Um, I think the sort of concept of the musicians who are also historians sort of speaks to me more than 
let's ride around on dragons and save the world. But that's just based on the one book I've read so far and the two of these that I read a while ago, so my opinions could totally change. But for now, I get to unhaul these two because I have all three in this. And that is all! Books! <laughs> Yay! I feel like I will never again have a book haul that big until like the holidays come around next year and I have Christmas and a birthday and there's some big book outlet sale. So after this, I'm not going to be doing monthly book hauls. I'll probably wait until I have like 10 books or so and then do a book haul and that'll be every, I have no idea, a few months. Maybe it'll be a seasonal thing. Uh, but for now, I am like stocked up for the foreseeable future in books and that makes me very happy inside. Um, and that is all. Bye for now.